Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a short break from JavaFX to go over Lambda expressions. So they're not actually unrelated because we're going to be using Lambda expressions to sort of create instances of event handler interfaces on the fly which we're going to be able to use to actually have our buttons do stuff and in the future we'll be able to use Lambda expressions to make a key event interface implementations and mouse event interface implementations and a bunch of cool stuff like that so they're definitely useful to know they actually are new to Java 8 so there's a good chance a lot of you won't be familiar with them but I learned them a while back and I find them to be really useful when creating GUI so that's why we're gonna take the time to properly at least learn the basics of what they're doing so I've set up this practice example and let's consider this scenario where we have a public interface called lifter and it has one method inside it public void lift then we have a class called gym and it has a method called bench press it's a void method and it takes in an instance of the lifter interface and it just it performs the implementations lift method so however this uh, lifter instance implements the lift method it just calls that so then I made here we have a main class and you can ignore this uh, this is just setting up the example we have this method called private void use gym it uh, takes in an instance of the gym class and the goal of this method is to use the provided gym to call the bench press method now at first glance this sounds like a pretty simple task can we just say gym dot bench press because it is a public method and we can do this but the thing is we can't directly just give it a new instance of the lifter class because uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with how in, uh, interfaces work if we try to just do this we get this error cannot instantiate the type lifter because by definition an interface doesn't actually have its, its methods implemented so you can't make an instance of something that doesn't actually have any implementation so before lambda expressions there were two main ways of actually getting an instance of this interface kind of quickly on the fly and I'll show you both of them just so we can sort of appreciate how great these lambda expressions really are so here's what the first way looked like we would actually still keep this new lifter part but we would add these curly braces and in them we would type public void lift and then I don't know we'll have our lift method do system dot out dot print line uh, I'm lifting sure sounds good now just to show you guys before I explain what that actually is we can run this and see did I run it yeah it it does say I'm lifting so this obviously does work and what's going on here is that we're making a new instance of lifter but since you can't directly instantiate an interface because it doesn't have an implementation by opening these curly braces where giving it an implementation right here just on the fly so we're actually implementing its one lift method here and then we're closing the body for our implementation and then we're closing this part the uh, the actual statement and then we're finishing the line here so the downside for this way of doing it is pretty obvious it, it's just completely confusing if someone's looking at your code at first glance even if you're looking at your your own code after not seeing it for a bit you're gonna have no idea what you're doing here I mean you have you have this method call obviously but then here you have you're instantiating something but then you have a you're opening a curly brace after it you seem to have a method but it's actually not in a normal scope and then you have this line with three of these symbols in a row and it, it's just really confusing overall so it does work but definitely inferior to lambda expressions the second main way of doing this sort of on the fly is we'll actually take out this and it's called uh, making a private inner class so what we can do is we can say private class and we'll call it uh, lifter impl which is short for lifter implementation and we'll have it implement uh, the lifter interface and then we'll open it up it's gonna tell us we need to add unimplemented methods and we'll implement this to do the same thing we'll have it do system dot out dot print line I'm lifting and so what this is actually doing is <clears throat> for those of you that are taking a computer science course a lot of times you'll hear the term is a relationship any or a class that implements an interface will always have an is a relationship with that interface so what that means is since lifter impl implements lifter 
lifter impl is a lifter. And the reason it's important to understand that syntax is because since this bench press method takes in a lifter, right, since lifter impl is a lifter, we can give it a new instance of lifter impl and it's perfectly happy with that, no errors at all. And just to prove that, if we run this, we get I'm lifting again. So completely valid syntax, but the downside to this again, it's it it looks somewhat better in my opinion. This was my um, first choice out of the the two that I've shown, but it's it's still pretty confusing. You're making this private this whole new private data type just to implement this one interface uh, or this one method in in the interface, and it's just very confusing. So now let's actually go into lambda expressions. So there's two main ways to do lambda expressions, and I'm going to show you guys both of them. The key number one rule to remember with lambda expressions, they only work on interfaces that have one method. So if I were to add, let's say like, I don't know, public void jump to this, lambda expressions are no longer valid. We have to choose one of the other two options. But if it does have one method, we don't have to do that. And I know you guys are thinking how often does it happen that you have to implement an interface that only has one method? You'd be surprised, especially with GUIs. It's, it's pretty common. Um, so I'm going to write out the syntax that we're going to use first and then I'll explain what it means after because it's pretty confusing. So just try and follow along I suppose, it'll just take a second, we'll put I'm lifting here and we can see no squiggly lines. Now for those of you, even if you've been doing Java for a very long time, if you haven't seen lambda expressions, you have no idea what this means, you, especially this, you've never seen the symbol f before unless you've done C++ in which it's a dereferencing operator, but it, uh, or, or rather a referencing operator, but either way it doesn't do the same thing in Java. So this probably looks pretty confusing, but if we hover over this we get a clue to what's going on. Somehow Eclipse is recognizing this symbol as the declaration for the lift method. So what's actually going on here is Java is being smart for once. It's actually understanding that this method takes in an instance of the lifter interface. The lifter interface only has one method, so whatever he's putting here, or uh, us being the coder, whatever the coder is putting here is likely the implementation for the lifter interface. So it's just going to assume that you're going to give it, and in this order, this order is important, that you're going to give it the parameters. So since lifter doesn't, or the lift method doesn't have any parameters, we have this blank, and then after that we give it this weird looking symbol which acts as the method declaration so that acts as the declaration for like the public void and name part and then after that we're giving the implementation for it so again that may seem confusing but also just to show you guys this part is acting as the implementation for a method and just to display them more clearly just like when we're defining a normal method we can put an open bracket here and then we can actually take this part out and put it right there and then this is perfectly valid there is no issue here the understanding we're here giving the parameters for the method here we are declaring the method or the rest of the method and then here we're giving the implementation inside of these curly braces then we're ending the statement this looks a little bit like it did before with the first example I gave but it still looks a lot neater here and it's a lot faster so also we can put other stuff in here so I've I don't know, we could put still lifting or something and just to show you guys it does work like a normal method. So that's how that works. Get understand the syntax. It's looks very complicated at first, but I promise it's not too bad. Now let's go over real quick the second method and then we'll uh wrap this video up here. So the second method is to actually make a method which is going to act as the um, implementation for the interface and I'll show you guys what that means here so if we make public void and we could call it lift if we wanted but just to demonstrate the fact that we don't actually have to call it lift I'm just gonna call it I don't know lift example right so it doesn't have the same name but I'm gonna show you guys that it still works so let's implement this method system dot out dot print line uh, lift or, or what did we have it I'm lifting okay and what we can do here is you're gonna see this this syntax that I'm gonna put here so we can put this and we can see Eclipse has no problems with this not yelling at us this is perfectly valid now again for those of you even if you've been doing Java a long time you probably haven't seen these double colons before 
again, unless you've done C++, in which they also mean not the same thing at all. <laughs> um, we can see if we hover over the over these double colons, again, we, it's understanding that this is the definition for or the implementation for the lift method. So basically, we're passing in this method as an argument, and it's understanding. Okay, since he's passing in a method, and this actual bench press method ugh, can't talk this bench press method takes in a instance of the lifter interface it's going to assume that we're trying to use this method that we're giving it as the implementation for the one method that's inside the lifter interface and if we run this we can see it works just fine so overall i know that was a lot of a lot of stuff we just went over but it definitely helps to learn that stuff this lambda expressions and just a good understanding of how interfaces work and methods that take interfaces work it's it's very important to know again not just for guis but you'll use it you'll use them all over personally i've had a lot of different scenarios where i've been able to utilize lambda expressions and and just having a solid understanding of how and when to use interfaces is very useful. So if you guys need to rewatch that, I know it was a lot of stuff, feel free to go ahead and do that. But anyway, I will see you guys next time and we will be able to actually start making our buttons do stuff using these cool lambda expressions. So see you later guys.